today I will uh, try to introduce you into analysis of bibliographic networks. Uh, this is a part of uh, exploratory uh, data analysis. And uh, I must say that uh, the topic is uh, essentially much more general than the uh, 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 topic announced by, by the title of the presentation. Uh, because the methods that I will present are much uh, applicable, much uh, in much broader sense. Uh, essentially, they are uh, they can be used for any uh, so-called uh, collection of uh, networks. I will explain this term later. Um, I, we, we, why I selected bibliographic uh, networks. That's because uh, it's relatively easy to get uh, 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 the data. So if you go, for instance, to Web of Science or Scopus, you can download the data and then construct uh, the corresponding uh, networks. <clears throat> now, uh, usually there is uh, quite uh, some work uh, to uh, clean the, this data. But uh, about this topic uh, uh, or this uh, aspect, I will not speak today. Um, yeah, uh, just a moment. So, uh, if somebody is interested to uh, uh, slides, they are available on GitHub. You go to GitHub and then Baula and Biblio, and there you can uh, download. Uh, uh, the data, the, the the slides, and also some data. So let's start with the notion of a, a network. Here we have a very simple uh, network that was constructed uh, many many years ago, but uh, it displays the base uh, uh, basic uh, uh, notions related to networks. So a network is. Uh, based on two sets. The set of nodes, these are represented by uh, circles on this uh, picture, and uh, links, these are uh, the lines uh, linking uh, different, uh, different nodes. Now, uh, a link can be uh, either directed, in this case we call it arc, uh, and uh, the direction is indicated by an arrow, you see here we have uh, this uh, arrow, but uh, in this case we have arrows in bo both uh, directions, so uh, uh, this means that essentially uh, uh, we can treat this as uh, directed or even undirected uh, 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 link. So undirected links are called edges, and uh, undirected means uh, usually in when we are displaying undirected links, we, we there are no uh, arrows, and uh, uh, such a line uh, 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 is considered as that we can move uh, uh, from uh, first uh, node to the second, and from the second to the uh, to the first. Uh, uh, nodes and uh, la uh, links they form so-called graph. So a base, a basic uh, of any network is a graph. And the uh, graph uh, determines the, the structure uh, of a network. But uh, usually in networks, we have also some additional data. For instance, on this picture, we have, we have numbers on links. And uh, uh, these numbers, in this case, are uh, uh, telling us how many times uh, two uh, characters uh, uh, from uh, Snoopy cartoon uh, co-appeared uh, in, in the picture. Uh, and then here we also have uh, different colors assigned uh, uh, to uh, different uh, characters. So this is another uh, property. And then uh, we also see that the sizes of circles are different. This is express, uh, expressing some other property of, uh, of these characters. So uh, we see that uh, in a network, we have additional data. Uh, 
uh, either properties of nodes or properties of links. So we can say that a network in general consists of a graph that determines the structure of a network plus additional data about uh, uh, nodes and links. This can be formally expressed as uh, 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 we say that ne a network consists of four components, set of nodes, set of links, set of node properties, and set of uh, link properties, or they are usually called weights. Uh, usually the set of links uh, uh, is partitioned to two additional set, set A, which is a set of arcs, it means uh, directed links, and set of edges, that means set of uh, undirected links. And we usually use uh, N for the number of, uh, of nodes and M for number of links. Here, uh, I have some additional terminology. Uh, uh, so we can have uh, arcs uh, uh, that are uh, leading, for instance, from A to B and from B to A. Uh, such pair of arcs is called uh, set of uh, or, uh, uh, set of opposite arcs. Then uh, a link can have uh, both endpoints uh, uh, equal. In this case, we are speaking about the loop. Uh, there can be also uh, uh, so-called parallel arcs or parallel edges. That means from one node to the other node, we can uh, go using uh, different uh, links. And as you see here, uh, in general, in a, a network, we can have uh, both uh, edges and arcs. Uh, here we have an, a special uh, node uh, that uh, it has no, uh, it, uh, which is not incident to any uh, link. Uh, such uh, nodes are called uh, isolated nodes. Now, there are, besides this general uh, notion of a network, there are some special types of networks. The first one are so called two mode networks. In two mode networks, the set of nodes is split into two uh, subsets, uh, V1 and V2, and each link has its end, end nodes in both sets. So uh, uh, the links uh, are linking uh, a node from the first set to a node uh, uh, from the second set. There are no links inside the first set and no link inside the second set. The other type of uh, network are so-called multi-relational networks. Uh, in the multi-relational network, uh, the set of links is uh, split into subsets, so it's partitioned, and uh, uh, each element, uh, each subset uh, of uh, links is then called a relation. Uh, for instance, if you have a group of people, uh, they can uh, they are, uh, can communicate in different ways. For instance, they uh, one com uh, way of communication would be using email. The other one would be by phoning. Uh, uh, the third one uh, just uh, 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 meeting and uh, uh, speaking, and so on. And each of these mo uh, modes of uh, communication determines uh, a corresponding uh, relation. And then we can add also time to a network. In this case, we are speaking about uh, temporal networks. Uh, we will not have enough time to, to uh, drill into this topic, uh, but uh, uh, it's quite important uh, and uh, it can be used also in the case of uh, uh, bibliographic networks. And then uh, we have a so-called linked or uh, multimodal network. 
in uh, linked or multimodal network, uh, both sets uh, are uh, uh, partitioned. So we have uh, a partition of the set of uh, nodes. And uh, then we have several relations. Uh, so the set of links is split in several relations. And usually these relations are uh, um, uh, subsets of the, uh, or they are linking uh, uh, some of these so-called modes. Uh, now, uh, instead of, uh, if we have such a linked or multimodal network, it can be uh, decomposed uh, to uh, um, one mode and uh, two mode networks uh, for each of these relations. And uh, what we get is a so called collection of uh, networks. And uh, you will see that, uh, for instance, in uh, analysis of bibliographic networks, uh, this is uh, 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 the case. Uh, also, these types of networks can be combined. Uh, so, for, in, for example, we can speak about temporal, two-mode, multi-relational uh, network. So, here I have uh, an example uh, of uh, data that we uh, can get from uh, Web of Science. So, this is a typical description of uh, work uh, from uh, Web of Science. What we have, we have the list of authors. We have a title, we have the information about the journal in which was pub it was published, then we have uh, information about the uh, language, uh, de details about the, the authors, and then quite important is this field CR, uh, which contains uh, references. So uh, in, in, the, uh, in this paper, uh, there were three references. One was to Borgatti, uh, the other one was to Falstein, and the other one was to Scott. And then we have uh, also publication year and uh, beginning, begin page, uh, end page, uh, some uh, uh, classification and uh, some internal uh, identification. So this is usually the data that we obtain from uh, bibliographic databases uh, based, like uh, Web of Science, or uh, if you go to Scopus, you would get uh, similar information, but uh, the format is a bit different. Now, such infor from such information, so you, what we usually do, uh, we select some topic, we go to, for instance, Web of Science, and then we search uh, uh, for um, works, it means papers, books, and uh, other documents on that topic. And so we, we get so-called hits. And then uh, uh, we can download uh, the hits, uh, uh, so this information. And from this information, now we can construct uh, uh, the networks. Now to do this, uh, uh, I wrote for uh, Web of Science a special program in Python uh, was to Pyet, which uh, does this uh, transformation. So it takes uh, the data downloaded from Web of Science and transform uh, this data into uh, several uh, networks. Uh, and these networks, uh, in the case of was to Pyet, are a citation network. It means a net, uh, network describing how one work is citing uh, other works. Then so-called authorship network, which is denoted by WA. Uh, this links works to authors. So for each work, uh, each work is linked to uh, its uh, authors. Then we have a keywords network. This is a network uh, between works and keywords and uh, uh, describes uh, for each work, what are the keywords used to describe this work. Uh, sometimes uh, the, uh, these keywords are missing. In that case, uh, in was to uh, we 
uh, extract keywords from the title of, of the uh, of the work. Then we have also a, a network linking works to journals. So for each work, we have the information in which journal uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, work was published, and then we have a partition by years. Uh, and then we have also information uh, about the uh, type of the description. So uh, uh, for uh, if you look here, uh, for hits, we have a complete description. So we have all the information. But uh, works are also uh, works that are mentioned as in citations. And th for these works, uh, sometimes we don't have a complete information. So uh, this uh, CD partition uh, has value uh, uh, for a given work, has value one if it is a hit, if we have a complete description, uh, and uh, has value zero if uh, we have so-called uh, IC name, ICI name only. So we know only the information that is uh, provided here in the uh, in uh, in the uh, reference. Now, uh, in the following, uh, I will use uh, some example networks. I must say these networks are usually quite large, so uh, we cannot uh, draw them and uh, look at, uh, at the picture and uh, uh, see what's going on, but. Uh, are relatively large. They have several, uh, let us say, uh, uh, ten tens of thousands of uh, of uh, nodes. So uh, we need to use uh, analytic methods to uh, uh, drill in. So I will use the following uh, networks. One is uh, about social networks uh, uh, that was collected in 2008. Here, for instance, we have uh, almost uh, 200,000 of uh, works. Uh, then uh, uh, the other one is uh, uh, the uh, 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 information about uh, mathematical uh, papers from Central Blood uh, uh, of, mathematic, uh, of Mathematics. And uh, uh, for, for the years from uh, 90 to 2010, here we have uh, more hundred thirty thousand and something more of different works, and more than uh, half a million of authors. Then uh, another network is uh, uh, peer review. This is a network uh, uh, on the topic of peer review, uh, and uh, here we have uh, seven uh, hundred. Uh, and over 700,000 uh, of works and uh, almost uh, 300,000 of authors. And then we have this SNA 18, which is uh, uh, extended version of this SN5, uh, which is uh, again on uh, social network analysis, but uh, the data were collected in uh, uh, 2018. Now, as I said, these networks are uh, quite large. And now, uh, how to analyze them? Uh, one of, of approaches is uh, 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 to use statistics. So, and uh, uh, what are the uh, basic options uh, that are usually used? The first one is uh, to, to look to global uh, or so-called overall properties. Uh, this means we are looking for this number so we, we uh, can uh, uh, determine the different sizes and uh, get the first impression about the network. Then, uh, Another thing is to look uh, to the uh, um, different properties. 
for instance, uh, there are many such properties that can be uh, defined uh, on a network. Uh, I will limit our attention to uh, the following. So the degree of a node uh, is a number of links uh, 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 of uh, uh, links that have uh, node V as an end node. Uh, in degree is uh, uh, a number of links with node V as a terminal node. So uh, it means that uh, we are looking in how many ways I can enter a given uh, node. And our degree is the opposite. It's telling us in how many ways we can leave a given uh, uh, node. Now, uh, many of the networks that we will use are weighted. It means we have some uh, weight on links. and. Uh, the notion of degree uh, can be extended uh, uh, in a way to uh, consider this weight. And uh, so a weighted degree of a node is the sum of the weights of links with uh, uh, this node uh, V as an, an end node. And uh, now uh, this can be also further extended to weighted in degree, weighted out degree, uh, and so on. And now, if we have such a property, uh, an interesting question is what are or which are the, the uh, units uh, that uh, uh, on which uh, uh, this property uh, attains uh, uh, minimal or maximum value? Uh, usually, we are uh, uh, looking for uh, maximum values. And the next uh, question is what, because these are uh, relatively large uh, uh, collections of numbers, this, uh, the, the values of these properties, uh, what are the distributions of these uh, values? So here uh, uh, I'm presenting for uh, this uh, network on peer review, the, uh, the uh, uh, in degrees uh, uh, for uh, for uh, all author uh, for authors, and uh, uh, then when we sort this uh, uh, in degrees, we get uh, the uh, information about uh, the authors which uh, uh, wrote the largest number of papers or co-authored the largest number of papers. So we get uh, for a given bibliography. Uh, the information of the, let us say, most productive uh, authors. And in this case, uh, uh, I, I will not uh, go into uh, uh, details about the uh, concrete example. Now, another uh, thing we can do is uh, we can uh, look to the distributions. Uh, but in, uh, as often turns out in uh, analysis of large networks, it turns out uh, two things. The, the first thing is uh, that uh, uh, large networks are usually sparse. So uh, they don't have uh, the density uh, uh, is uh, very small and is going towards zero uh, with uh, the increasing size of the network. So the density is not a very good measure uh, in the, uh, for large networks. And what we are usually using is uh, average uh, uh, degree. But uh, if you, I, if I would, uh, for instance, draw this in degree distribution uh, uh, in the ordinary scale, I would get uh, uh, a curve that's going uh, like this. So uh, it's uh, very close to the uh, to the axis. So uh, to get some impression about uh, about the distribution, in this case, we are usually using uh, double logarithmic scale. And these two pictures are, uh, these two uh, distributions are uh, uh, presented in double logarithmic scale. What is interesting here is uh, this pattern that essentially we get almost a line. And this means that uh, in this case, 
the distribution is uh, following so-called power law. Uh, in uh, network uh, theory, such uh, uh, networks are called scale-free uh, networks. And this was quite a surprise in uh, uh, end uh, of 90s, when physicists started to, to uh, do research in, in uh, uh, network uh, analysis, uh, because uh, uh, in mathematics, uh, we have quite a huge literature about uh, so-called random graphs. But uh, random graphs are based on uh, so-called uh, uh, erdos reni uh, model, uh, which assumes that uh, each link uh, in a network uh, has equal probability to uh, to uh, appear in a network. But it turned out that uh, in most real-life networks, this doesn't uh, hold. So the model, this erdos reni model, uh, is is not a very good uh, uh, model for uh, real life networks. But what uh, uh, turned out from uh, from uh, uh, analysis of different uh, real life networks is that most of them, uh, not all of them, are scale free, but the distributions are much closer to scale to this power law distribution uh, than uh, to the uh, uh, normal or Poisson distribution, which is uh, uh, which can be uh, uh, derived for uh, erdos reni uh, model. Uh, but uh, what I have also to, to stress here is that uh, uh, often uh, people that are analyzing network networks are doing, they are uh, removing, uh, they don't consider the direction of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of links. And for instance, in this case, if I would uh, produce uh, a degree distribution uh, without considering the direction of links, I would get something like this, but here I would get a kind of uh, dis uh, dis disturbance that is produced by, by this uh, other distribution. So uh, uh, we get here a free uh, uh, distribution because uh, uh, we split the, the links, uh, the, uh, we consider the links as direct as arcs. Uh, now we can fit uh, this uh, distribution. Uh, what turns out is that we always have here some kind of, uh, 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 let us say, noisy uh, behavior, but this can be uh, um, approached by uh, re considering uh, instead of the, uh, uh, the uh, this probability distribution, we uh, cons can consider the cumulative distribution and in cumulative distributions, this uh, uh, noise uh, uh, usually disappears. Now we can, besides the degrees, we can uh, look to other uh, uh, um, uh, distributions. For instance, we can look to the number of uh, works uh, by year. And it, it's interesting that uh, uh, this data can be fitted quite uh, well with uh, log normal uh, distribution. Uh, but uh, it also turns out uh, when we are analyzing some uh, special bibliographies that uh, these general patterns uh, do not uh, hold always. For instance, here I have uh, 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 have, have distributions uh, of uh, 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 number uh, uh, of authors per paper and uh, number of uh, works per author for Hong Kong University of Science and Technology for years 2017 till uh, 2019. And it turns out that essentially here we have quite regular uh, behavior as we have here, 
a similar curve, but we see that here we have a totally different behavior. So this distribution is composed of two components, a kind of regular and uh, uh, another irregular part. And if you look here, uh, what we see here, we see here that uh, there, are, there exist papers uh, with over uh, 5,000 uh, uh, authors. And for instance, uh, I looked uh, what are these papers and uh, the uh, paper with the largest number uh, of authors is uh, a paper with 5,215 authors. Uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, you can, if you click here, you can get uh, this paper. And uh, uh, it seems also here we have several uh, several uh, papers, uh, works uh, with, uh, I think it's uh, around 3,000 uh, uh, authors, but uh, if you look here, there are, uh, 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 for some of these numbers, there are uh, over 10 uh, such papers. So we see that here we have uh, a totally different, uh, different kind of uh, works than the traditional works. And it turns out that these are works, uh, 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 a kind of papers that are kind of reports about uh, projects in which many different institutions uh, are uh, collaborating. And then they are listing all the uh, uh, collaborators from all these institutions and uh, uh, the number of authors uh, goes into thousands. Uh, a similar case is here. Uh, you would expect here uh, uh, kind of scale-free uh, behavior, but we see in this part uh, the behavior is totally uh, different. So, uh, in many cases, we cannot assume that there is uh, only one uh, type of uh, behavior, only one uh, distribution, but uh, often there are different generators behind, and uh, they reflect. Uh, uh, in, they are reflected in the in the patterns of uh, distributions. Here I have a distribution uh, from Central Blood. Uh, uh, the red one uh, it's the distribution of uh, keywords. Uh, so. Um, uh, it expresses the probability that a paper has a, a, a certain number, is described by a certain number of keywords. And here uh, the red curve uh, describes this distribution for uh, all mathematical papers. And uh, the blue curve corresponds to uh, uh, the dis corresponding distribution uh, for graph theory. We see that. Uh, uh, say graph theorists uh, usually use uh, a smaller number of uh, uh, keywords than uh, and here again we have uh, the distribution of keywords uh, by number of works and uh, here is the distribution for uh, uh, mathematics and here is a graph for graph theory we see that these uh, lines here are uh, parallel, and this is uh, as expected because the uh, um, number of papers uh, from graph theory is much uh, smaller than the mathematical papers. Another interesting thing is if you look to the number of authors uh, through years. This is for social uh, field of social network analysis the data for 2018, and uh, uh, it spans from the uh, uh, 80s, uh, from previous century till uh, uh, 2018. And what we see here, different curves uh, represent a uh, number, uh, uh, proportion of uh, number of, uh, of uh, uh, yeah, of number of for different uh, uh, number of authors. So 
red curve represent how many uh, or proportion of papers that were uh, produced by a single author. And what we see that uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 in 80s, uh, more than 60% of papers were written by a single author. And uh, at the end here, we have a bit more than 10%. So the number of uh, papers written by a single author uh, drastically uh, reduced in, in this time period. Uh, the number of papers written by two authors is somehow constant, but the uh, uh, number of papers written by three or more uh, authors uh, is, uh, these numbers are increasing. So we see that in, uh, uh, for instance, in the field of social network analysis, uh, there is, uh, the, we can say collaboration or co-authorship uh, is uh, uh, grown here. Yeah, thank you. And here is the uh, distribution of, uh, of um, uh, uh, citations. And uh, if we normalize these distributions, we get uh, uh, such, a, such a picture and uh, we see that Essentially, the pattern of uh, uh, of citation uh, is uh, uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, general uh, law behind uh, behind this uh, 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 citation uh, distribution. Now, if we look uh, to the citations uh, citation networks. Uh, uh, they are described by the so-called citation relation. So uh, U relation CI means uh, uh, work U cites work V. Uh, we usually assume that uh, this relation is uh, irreflexive, so uh, it means there are no because usually a work doesn't cite itself, and it's almost a cycle. But in in further development, we as, we assume that the network is acyclic. Acyclic means that uh, uh, if I start in some node, I cannot. Uh, 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 if I'm traveling around, I cannot return to the uh, initial uh, node uh, back. So uh, now, uh, in uh, because these are almost acyclic. Uh, uh, they can be transformed into uh, a cyclic network. And this, there are different options. One is that we simply shrink the uh, strong components uh, into a single node. Uh, this is one option, which is not the best. A be much better option is so-called preprint transformation. Uh, uh, in using this uh, transformation, we uh, transform cycles into uh, acyclic substructures. And in this way, we transform a network into uh, a cyclic network. And now, if you look, uh, 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 if you assume that the network is acyclic, then uh, we can uh, produce a kind of uh, a standardized form of citation network uh, by adding uh, to a network uh, a common uh, source and uh, a common sink. And so this is now a cyclic, but adding an additional link arc from uh, sink to source, we uh, make it uh, cyclic. And this is a theoretical construction that allows us to uh, state uh, to observe some uh, uh, quite interesting properties. So uh, to, uh, now we have here only the structure. So we know uh, this node is citing this node, but uh, we would like to uh, find in this um, uh, citation network, uh, uh, 
we would like to find uh, identify uh, links and notes that are important N now how to do this uh, usually this is done by uh, uh, computing some uh, structural uh, properties on the networks that uh, express uh, uh, this importance and uh, in uh, for uh, uh, citation networks, uh, Hamon and uh, Dorian propose so-called SPC uh, count, search path count. And uh, this uh, means that to each link, to each arc, they assigned a number uh, counting how many different uh, paths from S to T are passing through uh, 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 the selected link, the UV. And uh, what's interesting is that for these uh, uh, counters, we can prove that they uh, satisfy so-called Kirchhoff vertex law, uh, saying that incoming flow equals to outgoing flow. And uh, no, uh, the other thing is if we cut, that means that we uh, select uh, a set of arcs uh, and uh, that disconnects uh, one part from the other. Uh, it turns out that, uh, yeah, one thing is because we have this uh, uh, Kirchhoff law, it, it holds also for, for uh, this uh, TS uh, uh, arc. And this means that the total fl flow through uh, through the network equals to the flow from T to S. Uh, and uh, we can also show that each cut has the same uh, value of the flow. So this, uh, uh, this uh, the value of the flow on the link TS is also equal to the flow through any cut. So uh, we can use now this flow through T, uh, from T to S, or uh, total flow, as a normalization factor. And what we get? We get that for each uh, uh, minimum uh, minimal arc cut set, we have that the sum of the uh, normalized uh, uh, flows equals to one. So we can interpret this uh, as a kind of probability, and essentially we can interpret this uh, ways uh, that's obtained in this way as uh, the probability that a random ST path passes through the arc UV. Uh, so, uh, and these uh, weights, normalized weights, are usually used as a uh, measure how important an arc in a citation network is. And now uh, when, so we transformed our citation network into a weighted network. And now uh, what we are usually searching for are the important uh, parts in this network uh, with respect to the uh, property that we uh, computed. And now this can be done in different ways. Uh, one is uh, using so-called cuts. Cut means that uh, if I have uh, a node property, then I preserve, on, preserve only nodes that have uh, the corresponding uh, value larger than a selected threshold. And the same for, for the link cut. Uh, if I have a weight, uh, I preserve only links that have uh, the weight larger or equal to the uh, selected threshold. So here I have an example of this. Um, this was a, a, a network of uh, literature on uh, self-organizing maps, a citation network. And uh, uh, here I made a cut uh, at level, uh, I think it was zero, zero 007. Uh, and uh, uh, we obtain uh, the, this subnetwork, and it, it turns out that it contains uh, 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 most of the most important works in, in the in this literature. And we also see that the 
uh, field of uh, self-organizing maps uh, had uh, 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 at the beginning some uh, evolution uh, uh, and then in a certain point uh, this evolution split into two uh, branches. There was another branch here but this branch uh, joined the, the, the second branch after some uh, some time. Uh, now another approach is using islands. So here in this picture we have a cut, so we select a threshold and uh, uh, yeah, uh, to explain this picture, uh, I have, we have a network and now we have a property and we can consider these properties as determining the height of the corresponding element. And then uh, we uh, select a threshold and uh, we preserve only elements that are above the threshold. So this is the picture, this is the uh, concept of the cut. Uh, the problem with cut is that we have no control on the size of the obtained uh, uh, subnetworks. So uh, because of this, we uh, produced another approach, which is called islands, where uh, we start uh, with the highest uh, element, and then we are slowly decreasing this threshold until the uh, subnetwork, current subnetwork, attains uh, the uh, the size. Uh, uh, we, we are searching for. So usually we specify that we would like to get a subnetwork uh, in the of the size in some selected range, for instance, from uh, 30 to 50. And now when, if I would, uh, uh, for instance, in this case, I, I would go down further, the size of this uh, subnetwork would be too large. So I cut here and then I get another uh, top and I'm going down and then I cut at certain. And what I obtain are so-called islands. Uh, this approach is very uh, uh, very useful because uh, it uh, allows us to, to identify uh, uh, sub-networks of uh, uh, reasonable size. And uh, from another point, uh, uh, it also identifies uh, uh, subnetworks with uh, for lower level of thresholds, but uh, which are, uh, uh, if we are looking to networks as something that is evolving, so we have uh, some locally important uh, subnetworks, things that are starting to grow up, but uh, they are, uh, still didn't reach maybe their their uh, final uh, final uh, uh, position, so uh, it allows us to identify uh, emerging uh, uh, important subnetworks. Uh, skip this. So, for instance, uh, we applied this to uh, the data set of U.S. patents. It had uh, over uh, three, uh, three millions of uh, nodes. And here is the, uh, uh, the main island uh, for, uh, for US patents. And now if we look to this picture, we don't have any interpretation of this, but it turns out if we look to the titles uh, of the uh, patents, we see and we do simple frequency analysis of, of the most frequent word, words, it turns out that uh, this network uh, consists of patents on, you see, liquid crystal. Uh, it means that the most important patent in, let us say, considered period was the uh, were pa patents on, on uh, liquid uh, crystals. And these are uh, patents related to the, for instance, screen of this uh, network and uh, uh, of this uh, uh, computer and uh, and so on. There are many such islands. Uh, the next the next one is, for instance, uh, this one, 
And if we look here, we, we see that the uh, topic is uh, uh, polyurethane uh, uh, foams and so on. And here is the uh, uh, main island uh, for uh, social network analysis. Uh, I have no time to drill in, uh, but you see here we have uh, a very strong link. And uh, it turns out that this part corresponds to the traditional social network analysis. And this part uh, corresponds to the entrance of physicists. Uh, the social scientists are calling this invasion of uh, physics into uh, uh, social network analysis. And here are uh, mainly papers uh, produced by uh, physicists. Uh, this is uh, nowadays called uh, networks uh, science. Uh, so uh, I think I, I would need uh, to stop uh, uh, just to mention some uh, 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 other things. So if somebody is interested in this topic, uh, you can download uh, the slides and look to the rest. I prepared quite a lot of material. Uh, one important thing are so-called uh, uh, derived networks. It turns out that we can define the multiplication of networks and using multiplication, maybe I can show you. Yeah. Uh, using multiplication, you can produce so-called uh, uh, derived networks. For instance, if I uh, have a network uh, 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 describing the connection between works and authors, and the network uh, describing uh, connection between works and keywords. Now, if I transpose this and multiply this, I get a network linking authors to keywords. So I get the information how uh, uh, for each author, what are the keywords that uh, uh, he is using. Or for instance, if I have a citation network and I multiply the citation network with uh, transpose of uh, author ship network and uh, on the other side multiply by the same network, I get the network linking authors uh, to authors by citation. So I get the information how one author is citing the other author and so on. For instance, here uh, uh, I have a network that is describing how uh, the cit citations between uh, disciplines and so on. Here, uh, another problem arises uh, of normalizations, uh, and this is uh, the approach is called fractional approach. And uh, then there are uh, notions like bibliographic coupling and uh, co-citation and so on. So I think this uh, field of uh, bibliographic network analysis is, is quite rich, and uh, uh, there are many methods uh, uh, that can be used to analyze uh, such networks. But what's important is that these methods can be later uh, uh, used in what we call uh, higher order uh, bibliographical service. So uh, for instance, uh, uh, you can use these methods to uh, provide services to people uh, to different users, for instance, an editor of a journal, uh, uh, he, uh, he has, for instance, a problem how to select an, uh, a reviewer for a given paper. Or, for instance, a student uh, is, uh, will, uh, is preparing to, to write uh, his thesis. And the question is, what are the papers that uh, I need to, uh, to uh, read uh, uh, for my uh, thesis and so on? Uh, and this is, uh, these methods are the basis of these services. So thank you for your attention. And if uh, there are some questions, I'm ready to answer. So thank you, Vladimir. Uh, very nice talk. Uh, so uh, are there any questions? Uh, I don't see any questions in the chat, but you can raise your hand. Yes. Uh, um, 
Zika? Z Zika? Uh, yeah, it's it's shake it's actually, but no, oh, sorry. Oh, no problem. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you very much for your great uh, keynote lecture. I had just a short question, which might sound naive uh, at first sight because I'm really uh, not into uh, this network uh, analysis and. Uh, my question is concerned with human relations. So can we modify those methods to model human relations, which evolve over time? So two nodes would have a connection, let's say, if they are in yes. some sort of... Yes. Uh, I didn't include this in, into, into, uh, into uh, the slides, but... Uh, Uh, some years ago, I wrote uh, a paper, Temporal Bibliographic uh, Networks. So uh, all these uh, methods uh, can, uh, so we, we can add to bibliographic networks a temp, uh, time dimension. Uh, I'm using a special, uh, special approach uh, that was uh, uh, presented in this paper on algebraic approach to temporal network analysis based on temporal quantities. So uh, uh, there are different ways how to uh, describe a temporal network. Uh, mo most of the approaches are using so-called uh, uh, description by temporal slices, where you take some uh, uh, instant uh, of time and for that, uh, or interval of time, and for that interval, you uh, treat a network as a static. So you, you, you take a slice snapshot uh, in, in a given uh, time interval, and then you decompose the time uh, uh, line uh, to such sub-intervals, and you get a sequence of, uh, of networks. This is one approach. The approach proposed here in uh, uh, in this paper uh, uh, is different because uh, uh, we introduce the notion of temporal quantity. A temporal quantity is, uh, is, uh, consists of triples, uh, start, uh, end of the interval, and the value on that interval. So we have uh, uh, essentially a, a list of intervals with the corresponding values. And in some intervals, uh, uh, this uh, quantity can uh, can also be absent so, or inactive. So it, it can exist on some uh, sub-intervals, but not in, in, on all. And then uh, it turns out that uh, uh, the corresponding, we can construct a semi-ring on, on this structure. And uh, then uh, 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 just using some algebraic approach, you can compute many interesting uh, quantities. And these temporal quantities are assigned to each node and to each uh, link. So uh, each uh, for each node or uh, for each link, we have a description of its behavior through time. Yeah? This is the basic idea. Okay, thank you. So we have maybe time for one more question. Uh, I see Andre yes. raising his hand. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can extend it. So any, if anybody has any questions, we can probably extend mm -hmm. it further. But just shortly, to link this perhaps also to yesterday's keynote by Daniela Witten, who is an author of statistical learning approaches. Vlado, you mentioned the... Um, uh, computational properties, self-organizing maps, which are part of the learning machinery. What are the computational properties of this approach and possibilities? And could this be connected to learning options? I additionally mentioned with Vlad, we cooperate with symbolic data analysis. Could also there be any links here? Thanks. So, uh, uh... Uh, yeah, uh, 
I'm not a specialist for uh, self-organizing maps. Uh, what I did, I just uh, found uh, 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 bibliography. Uh, so this group uh, uh, in Finland uh, uh, that is uh, working on self-organizing maps, they collected uh, a complete some years ago. I think they are not uh, uh, maintaining this bibliography anymore, but uh, some years ago, we, I got a complete bibliography of all uh, papers produced on this topic, and then I just used that bibliography, transformed that bibliography in temp in in in, uh, 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 in networks, and then an uh, analyzed that. Uh, I think that usually uh, such data that are prepared by uh, groups of people that are involved in something are usually uh, uh, pr produce quite nice uh, they provide quite nice data sources because how to say they are interested in into a topic and so uh, uh, i think that data was quite quite nice i i needed some some uh, uh, work for clean to clean the data but uh, it was quite okay. Now, uh, to, so I cannot comment on uh, on uh, self-organizing maps because uh, I, I know the concept, but I, I never uh, did some research on that topic. So uh, uh, it would be too much to 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 uh, say something uh, uh, strong about that uh, about connection with. Uh, uh, symbolic data analysis. Uh, this uh, uh, algebraic approach to temporal networks is very close. Essentially, I used <laughs> the same uh, the same procedures I'm using for 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 um, uh, for uh, analysis of uh, temporal networks. Uh, I used also, for instance, for uh, for an analysis of uh, um, uh, uh, so-called bike uh, 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 bike systems. Uh, nowadays, in many cities, you have you have uh, uh, you can uh, lend uh, 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 you can uh, take a city bike and use it. Uh, and but what is is interesting that there exists a quite universal format uh, uh, allowing to uh, which essentially they are keeping track about all these uh, 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 bikes and you can download the data for many cities and then you can analyze these uh, uh, bike, uh, bikes uh, uh, travels and uh, in the in different uh, in different cities so it's and for that i essentially i applied uh, i constructed corresponding symbolic objects but the uh, Procedures are very similar to the procedures that I'm using for uh, uh, temporal uh, network analysis. So, okay, thank you. Thanks. We can allow sp still space for one or two questions, if just as organizer. I think. Okay, I don't see any in the chat, but uh, maybe uh, uh, I can ask one, uh, but uh, it's going to be a very, uh, probably very naive question here. But uh, uh, I was wondering if uh, uh, you studied or if uh, you had a look of, on whether uh, there are some links between this analysis of networks and, uh, um, I mean, some type of, I guess, topological data analysis with a specific uh, topology on top of this. So to me, networks, you can apply a topology on this and then yeah, maybe you can uh, use some of those tools. Um, uh, there is a field in uh, uh, exploratory data analysis called uh, topological data analysis. But uh, how to say, I never uh, <laughs> studied that uh, ideas so I, I, uh, I, mm -hmm. I have no opinion about this 
Okay. But, uh, but how to say, I think that uh, uh, I look to some papers and uh, some of approaches are using these ideas of hypergraphs and, uh, uh, and so on. So uh, I think that there are quite interesting ideas, but uh, sometimes uh, 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 some of these ideas can be... Uh, uh, because hypergraph essentially uh, you can represent also as a two-mode network, and uh, so ma many of uh, the notions can be some, at least some of them can be transformed into, let us say, traditional network uh, analysis. Uh, now, probably uh, a view uh, from. Uh, uh, Hypergraph uh, perspective is uh, conceptually uh, maybe more clear, uh, but I think computationally uh, uh, the uh, procedures for dealing with ordinary graphs are much more uh, developed. So uh, I think uh, I had I had some discussions with some people uh, that are also trying to. Uh, approach uh, uh, bibliographic uh, network uh, analysis from this standpoint of view of uh, hypergraphs but um, i think that uh, when you when you come to the uh, uh, point where you have to compute something i think uh, the the traditional approach is still uh, more efficient thank you but uh, you never know what the time will bring. So uh, maybe they will develop some some new methods and so on. So, but this is, let us say, a current situation. Thank you.